I would like to present to you my black and white print making formula. The developing agent is amidol, and what that does is reduce, that's the gaining of electrons, the silver highlights to their elemental silver in an emulsion matrix coated on paper. Now amidol has a good guy, bad guy reputation. The good is that with very little dispute, Amidol is one of the finest developing agents known and it's been around a long time since the 1890s. It produces rich, strong, and vibrant tones and has the ability to resolve virtually anything on the tonal scale. The Westons lived by it. Morley Bear too, and Ansel used it early in his career. The bad. It stains everything. It's poisonous, and it is absorbed through the skin, and it has a reputation of having a very short life. Well, I'm here to tell you that the latter is certainly not true, and my formula will last at elevated temperatures beyond the usual 68 degrees, say 74, for 10 plus hours. Yes, it is moderately toxic, but Weston never wore gloves and didn't die from using it. Just wear gloves and handle it using some common sense and you'll be fine. Absolutely, it stains everything it touches as soon as it's wet. Again, wear gloves and use common sense. Presently, there are two main sources of Amidol, China and England. Now, given a choice, what country would you trust to produce a consistent product? If you choose China, write me a nasty note and go digital. Look, your prints are only going to be as good as the weakest link in your armatarium, so if you choose cheap chemicals, you will get, at the very least, inconsistent results. There are a number of reps here in the U.S. from which you can uh, purchase high quality, reliable chemistry. I purchased through Art Craft Chemical and I can't recommend Michael Jacobson highly enough. But whomever you buy from, buy for quality and nothing less. Anyway, Amidol, in our formula, 6 grams. Sodium Sulfite which is more known as a mild alkyl foodstuff additive, is known in photography as an accelerator. That is, it excites the developer, in our case amidol, and adds rapidity to the development process, thereby increasing contrast. It serves a dual purpose also as a preservative by inhibiting oxidation of the amidol to air. This is FYI now. Uh, sodium sulfite can be interchanged with either sodium metabisulfite or sodium bisulfite. However, the molecular weight is different by a ratio of 9.5 sulfite to 10.4 metabisulfite. So anyway, for our formula, use 67.5 grams of sodium sulfite. Citric acid, a.k.a. lemon salt, is another foodstuff additive. In our formula, we use it as a preservative. It lowers the pH of the alkaline developer to prevent too much oxidation. That's the loss of electrons to an increased oxidative state on the print itself. Citric acid also acts as a restrainer. That is, as the amidol ages over a matter of hours, alone it can produce a gradual print fogging and loss of contrast. Citric acid prevents this. Too much citric acid in our formula creates brown stains and blotches on the print. 4.5 grams. Potassium bromide also serves as a restrainer and simultaneously helps control excessive contrast. Use 1.5 grams. 
To all of this add 750 milliliters of water. Tap water is probably okay. I filter mine with a Brita and do just fine. 68 degrees is our standard water temperature. For added print contrast, I recommend increasing water temperature. 2 degrees can make quite a difference and 4 is huge. The opposite is true for contrast reduction. You shall find this method's results highly predictable. Now others, as in Michael Smith, increase contrast by using a second tray just filled with water. What you do is remove the print from the amidol solution and gently immerse, that's gently immerse, the print face down, I believe, in the water bath after. The lighter values continue to expose while the darker values are depleted. For more, refer to their website, michaelandpaula.com. Anyway, manipulating the temperature for changes of contrast is what I advocate.